Metal Slug! Cream. Yo, we're back. We got SGRK with this fireman cap. GW needs to stop sending old world news. Sending you old world news? Yeah, I don't know. You can sign up for a mailing list or something, I guess. Which hats, sure. Uh -huh. Cream team? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I don't normally take requests. Good suggestion, but I've already done it. Uh, let's see what people have typed while I was whilst, whilst I was gone. Favorite so far? Oh wait, what? Let's go. Your take hasn't appeared yet, which is weird because you submitted it via Discord. Well, we got there's two hundred. I don't know where yours is. Hmm. The only spew you have at the moment is what's the go uh, with Arachnarok Spider being 310 points for the old world? I don't know anything about that game. Hopefully it's good. What if it's really my unfiltered terrible take? Then sometimes your unfiltered terrible take is so bad that it is a meme. You know, it's okay. It happens to everybody sometimes. AOS needs a bird faction. Ugh. It does. It's Zinch. That's why Zinch's models are so shit. Got him. Um, you're making zero progress in your Lord of Hubris because you're typing in stream. Damn, the hubris, right? These are a real hot take that is like lukewarm. Magic should have released AOS Commander decks instead of 40k. Obviously not. Um, 40k is a slam dunk million sales because the game is just crazy popular. Age of Sigmar is not. It's maybe every once in a while over the past few years, I think the second best selling war game in the world, way after 40k. Some I think for a while it was the Star Wars one, and then for a while it was the Marvel one, but AOS is actually being pretty successful, all things considered. But it can't touch 40k, and so from a business sense, what they did was probably right, even though I didn't like it. I just wanted an AOS one as well. Uh, the AOS hidden, hidden or secret layer the magic released was pitiful. It was pitiful. Yeah, they spent, they spent time and effort on the 40k cards, and they didn't give a fuck about the AOS ones, which kind of sucks. But then I made my own. And I put a lot of thought and care into them, and they're fun to play with, and nobody watched that video. And I am not mad, because I knew it. Sometimes, you just gotta make what you wanna make. Deal with it, right? Um, AOS player should consider playing Warcry, but for some reason they don't. Because I'm not interested in playing a skirmish game. I can only answer for myself. Um, I don't want to play Warcry, because I don't want to play a skirmish game. I don't have any interest in doing so. I would like to play a 2,000 point war game called Age of Sigmar, because I like it and it's fun. I'm not trying to play something kind of like it on a different scale. Just no interest whatsoever in doing so. Categorically. Um, that's the reason. It's like... It's like saying magic players should just play Yu-Gi-Oh because it's pretty similar and you, you know, you like card games. Not really. I just like magic. I'm not looking for everything like magic to play. I found my game. I'm not trying to do another one. I got, I found my game. I got the horse. I got the horse in the race. I'm not trying to buy two horses. So that's un that's sort of my hot take answer to that. Is like, hey, you like magic, so you like deck building games. So you're gonna like Underworlds because it's deck building, and uh, Age of Sigmar. Both of those games you like. I was like, yeah, I like both of those games. Independently, I'm not trying. I'm not looking for yet another game that's kind of like two other games I play, but kind of worse. At both of those extremes mixed together. Eh, I'm just not. 
But what if you only have an hour to play of Warcraft? Then I won't. I don't know. feel like this is a medium take. Best lore that needs more is OBR. The Bone Tithe is cool. Best flavor is FEC. Worst flavor is Ideneth. And feels uninspired. And worst lore is IDK. IDK's lore is pretty cool. Um, Flavor one. I don't know how you would even describe the flavor of IDK. I think their default paint scheme does them no favors. Because they're like a tortured goth army. And then their paint scheme is just like silly bright Disney uh, fish colors. I don't know. And the eels look stupid, and the shark's size looks stupid. Uh, but I'll, I don't know. I think they should just be the Hellboy elves. Remember the elves from Hellboy 2? Del Toro? Just do that. That's what Ideneth default paint scheme should be in my IMO. Where'd you take whoever designed Stormcast didn't realize that everyone who liked Space Marines already had some? Yeah. And they liked Space Marines for very different reasons. Um, Hellboy of Slap? They did. They were sick. From what I recall. Space Marines are cool because of the setting. The models are goofy. I think the models are derpy. Space Marines are cool because of the concept of them and because of the setting. As models, they're like, okay, maybe. They're like, okay. And the ones that look more like people, the new ones that look more like Call of Duty people, don't like them either. What are they called? The new ones. I don't like them. Too human-ish. Um, medium take, the newest rats look good, but are too cartoony. Boy, um, I hope you like them, because come 4th edition, well, eh. Chaos Space Marines look cool. In the art, maybe. But I'm judgmental, and I don't play the game, so... Forty K is far too bloated. I don't know. Probably not. Your prediction is that AOS gets wildly more popular over the next five to ten years. Brain damage, no way. Forty K is as popular as it is because the setting is so awesome that you don't need to interact with the game or buy anything whatsoever and be perfectly satisfied just listening to Wikipedia articles about how sick the setting is. And that's what most people do. Uh, if AOS gets a setting as genius as 40K's and it won't, then maybe. But, yeah. Good, I mean, hey. Uh, good luck. <laughs> oh, you didn't mean wildly more popular than 40K. Okay, because I'm like, ain't no way. But yeah, it has nowhere to go but up. Well, that's not true. Um, but yeah, I think it'll... AOS has been doing pretty well, all things considered. But hey, whoa, a bunch of people who never touched a Warhammer model in their whole life love the old world, apparently. Yeah, they love the Steam game. I don't know. A lot of people that have never played a game can like cool things from it. You know? Not exactly a crime, but yeah. Um, AOS has been growing, but now Old World can drink some of its milkshake. Yeah, fuck you. Get your own. Anyway. If they wanted to appeal to Space Marine fans of Stormcast, then why release female models? Because it doesn't break lore to do that. I think that's what the people are mad about, right? Like, they're, inv they're inventing Stormcast from whole cloth. They're just typing words. And if you're just inventing it, you can just say, yeah, they're heroes. Nothing that says they can't be women. And then you make cool, cool women uh, Stormcast, and everybody's happy. Apparently it's illegal or something in uh, 40k universe, which kind of makes sense. It's like a weirdo, theocratic, dictatorship kind of worst, worst future outcome. Yeah, sure. Kind of makes sense in the setting, I suppose. I don't know how they justify it, because I don't play the game or particularly care. But, um, old world player base doesn't play AOS? Yeah, for sure. They still play Warhammer Fantasy Battle? Probably not. 
maybe a few of them. But in general, I would say that the player base or the people that would be interested in Old World is 99.9% .9 people who never played Fantasy ever and only maybe played the Steam game and 0.1% fantasy players that actively actually played fantasy in real life. They exist, but um, very, very, very small amount in my IMO. But I don't think there's much overlap. If you play AOS, I think the chances are decent you could be interested in the old world. If you play old world, I think the chances are not decent that you would then try AOS or are interested in it. I think the the overlap of interest only flows from one way, probably. But I don't know. Old World boxes should not be $300 for 1,250 points. Well, they are. I don't know why anyone's surprised that they are, but they are. People were complaining for years about their game that sold poorly being cancelled aren't going to want to play the replacement. They've demonstrated that. I think a lot of people have over time. Um, they were rightfully upset that their game died and re was replaced at the time with, with shit. Anyone would be upset about that. But then Age of Sigmar got good, and the community was good, and eventually a lot of them were just like, eh, fine, actually AOS is pretty good. Fucking A. Fine. You know? I think that's more common than not. I mean, there's like weird, bitter, jaded people who literally never got over it, but I think that's the minority. It's hard to say. Yeah, mini wargaming people do exist, but, you know, it's kind of like crime. You see it on the news, so you think it happens all the time, but it really doesn't. You just see it every single time it does happen. Um, because you're shown it more often than you used to be shown it, but the overall occurrence of it is much less. You know, it's one of those things. Uh, you can always find one random... Uh, you can always find one random unhinged person and then retweet that person so that everyone sees them. But you don't have good data on the number of people there are, you know. And the person is held up as an example of the other side. They're all like that, you know, I don't know. There should be more female representatives in destruction armies. Um... I don't know if I care. Eh. Are there female orcs? I don't think there are. Like, biologically, I mean. Uh, I guess I don't know. Is that a 40k thing? Can somebody help me out with the lore of it? Is the... Orcs are fungus and they're and they don't even have technically a gender, they're just all men looking. Is that a 40k thing or is that also AOS? Orcs are fungus strictly 40k? Good, because that's actually kind of stupid. <laughs> no no hate. Biologically they're just asexual, okay. As far as I know, orcs and grots don't have a gender or genitals at all. Okay. So they're kind of, they're right out there as well. Um, doing female ogres would be hard. Because you would have to do it in such a way so that it wouldn't be a fucking fat joke. Which is maybe what the faction is anyway, and so you're doomed, right? Damn, that would be really hard. It'd be really hard to make a lady ogre that isn't just a really kind of insulting joke. You know what I mean? Uh, some big mama from One Piece looking ass thing. 
which actually that is already a huge joke and it doesn't land well. Yeah, I guess ogres just are a fat joke, so we just roll with it. It's fine. Yeah, I, I don't know. As always, my answer to this, it's a little weird to like specifically, we need to specifically have more of this gender or that gender or this race or that race. That's as strange as a goal, I think. But my requirement is the same for everything. If you make it fucking awesome, no one will give a shit. That's it. It's that simple. Make it fucking awesome. And then you're 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 good. That's it. That's my requirement. If it's not fucking awesome, I will complain about it. So, there it is. There is your requirement. Make it fucking awesome. If it's not though, I'm a bitch about it. Not necessarily because it's women, just because you made something that's not awesome and I always hate that. <laughs> Simply make everything cool. Forehead. Hot take where the lady rats at though? Uh deviantart.com slash CJ Yobusta favorites dot html. I mean Ahem. How does he know? You don't want the female rats. They do exist, but they are bad. Just make them awesome. It's that easy. It's just that easy. So simple, right? I want to be a Repentia IRL. Great goal. Please do that. Work on it. I wish you Godspeed. No trolling. Please. <laughs> Ideneth would have a much better competitive ranking if any of the faction's players knew how to play Ideneth. Oh, IDK players are bad, lol. Okay, hot take. Um, not a single person in the whole world is good at this army, I guess. Look, their old rules were very, very, very easy to win with. Almost childishly easy to win with. And then they lost all of the good ones, and, well, here we are. Um, I don't feel the need to kick them when they're down. I have no malice. Good meme. Applies to anything, right? Any army. If Beast Claw players were better, they'd have a higher win rate. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Several factions should be squatted from AOS, and not all of them are BOC. Um. Cold take, right? What are the... If you had to pick two. If you had to pick two. I don't even need to say them, because everybody knows them. They're already... I see them already in chat. It's Beast of Chaos, and it's Bone Splitters. Um, some of them pick bone splitters and then bone splitters again. All right. Anyway, um, if you want to, I think it's a bit, uh, what's the word for it? What's the word for you buy a supported product and then they come out with a new edition, not a new whole game, a new edition. And they're like, your army no longer exists, fuck you. Everybody else who bought an army when you bought one, they can keep playing the game, but you can't. You gotta go to Old World now, some other fucking game. That's terrible. It should essentially never happen. This is the third edition of the game. We've had Age of Sigmar for almost 10 years. You can't be squatting a faction entirely. You can't do that. 
what are you doing? In first edition, when they didn't even know who would be in the game? Fair. Even in second edition, okay, maybe. But if you bought into the whole Age of Sigmar concept, and then eight years into the game, they just drop your entire army, what the fuck? That's terribly... That, that's so not... That's not okay. That's so unprofessional. It's, it's like amateur hour. You can't do that. We joke about bone splitters going away and no one playing them. And the memes are like kind of true, actually. But if you've kept them in the game this long, take some responsibility. How to lose players forever. Right? Who's gonna, who's gonna come back to your game? After that's why they left. After that being the reason why they left. It's one thing if your game dies, and then after it's dead, six years later you kill it. And then you come out with a new game based on the scraps of that. Like, that's kind of shitty. But this isn't even a game change. This is just like, yeah, we're taught. We just don't feel like making Bone Splitters good. We don't feel like giving them new models. Thanks for your money for seven years. Fuck you? I don't know. That's not alright. You can't do that. They will. And it's shit to do that. Even though I think Bone Splitters, stupidest army in the game. Terrible models. No theme. Boring. Uh, rules. Boring. No monsters. Naked, stupid, witch doctor crap. Couldn't be... Uh, almost the lamest army probably in the game. Nothing interesting about them at all. I don't have... M the stair guy is cool. The thousand yard stair? One of the coolest rules in the whole game. Everything else? Kinda worthless to me. I say all those mean things, but there's no way you should actually squat a whole faction this late into the game. You missed your opportunity. Your window is gone. Anyway. Fuck you. Uh, there should be a fifth Grand Alliance. Nope. And get the Renegade factions out of the alliances they don't really fit into. No. Nope. Bad take. What would it be called? The Grand Alliances are polar opposites. There's two of them. It makes a plus sign, right? It is it is a it is a diagram of opposites. Order. Chaos, right? Other one. Death. Destruction. Okay, those aren't opposites. What's the fifth one? The one in the center called soup? It's just a big soup circle. What would it even be? The Grand Alliance, you are in a Grand Alliance because of the God you worship. No other, every other reason is copium. You're in a, a Grand Alliance because of the God you worship. That's it. End of story. That's where it starts and ends. You are in chaos if you worship chaos gods. You are in order if you worship gods in the order pantheon. You are in death if you worship Nagash. You're in destruction if you worship Gorkamorka. That's it. They don't really fit into. Every army fits perfectly into the Grand Alliance they are currently in. You're thinking about it too hard if you're getting into the philo philosophy of it. Uh, you missed the point. There's one reason that you're in a Grand Alliance, and that's your worship of your god. That's it. Do BSC worship chaos? Yep. Do Skaven worship a Chaos God? Yep. That's why they're in the faction. That's it. Um, bad take. Fifth Grand Alliance soup. Nope. Lack of rules balance is a feature, not a bug, and it's what keeps the game fresh. Um... This is similar sounding to a different hot take that was less wrong than this one. This mail, this, this truck here is what this sent, uh, paragraph is. 
I don't think it keeps the game fresh, actually. Uh, I think the way that they're trying to keep the game fresh with Seasons isn't working. I don't like that. Damn, it's so cool that my army sucks this year. Awesome. <laughs> so fresh. Maybe fresh. It keeps the game fresh because you start a fresh army. I don't know. Mm. Lut Fugsa. Uh, thanks for the tier one. I appreciate it. I know it's a loot fighting game community. I know it's FGC. Anyway, thanks a lot. I was on a roll, and so I didn't thank you, and I meant to. Makes you start a fresh bottle of whiskey. Second edition Legion of the First Prince was the coolest army, especially when it could be run without Balakor. Computer, translate this word. Oh, overpowered. Okay, yeah, no, mm -hmm. you're right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Second edition Legion of the First Prince was the most overpowered army. With rules a child could win with. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Blood slick ground, free summoning out of it. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, hey. Legion of the First Prince went in here, and uh, there it shall stay. Also, soup into the trash you go. Soulblight Grave sites have no counterplay and should be able to be smashed to rubble. They certainly do have counterplay. They have less counterplay than they used to, to be fair. But you can put models on them or near them. And um, you, can, you can zone them out. That's the counterplay. The counterplay is zoning them out. Mm. It's true that there is less... The ranges are better than they used to be for it. But yeah, that that's the counterplay. If they could be smashed to rubble, I guess it would depend on your army. But if they could be smashed to rubble, I would have a 100% win rate against Soulblight Grid. Actually, no, I would still lose to zombies. Never mind. All right, hey, maybe lukewarm take. Maybe, maybe lukewarm take, actually. I mean, I'd still lose to Soulblight. So, yeah, fair. All right, good work. Deployment and list building should matter less or the same as the actual decisions you make in the game. Uh, in your experience, you can usually tell the outcome of the game by looking at the deployment. Deployment is very important. Um, this, by the way, is... Battle tactics make this worse. Battle tactics make the actual decisions you make during the game a lot less meaningful. You just accomplish your battle tact. Whatever your opponent did, eh, okay. A big part of being a good general happens before the game begins. Arguably, hmm. No, I don't think it is the majority, but I think it's something like half. It's very important. A big part of being a great general is list building and deployment. These are hugely important skills. Playing the actual game is mostly pretty simple, and a lot of the skillful meat and potatoes of the game has been removed for convenience. And this is what you get. You used to have to stay close to heroes to inspire and presence them and give them buffs and stuff. You used to have to hold on to objectives by actually staying on them. You used to not capture them during deployment even. Uh, area denial was much more important. You had to spread out a lot more. There were more objectives on the table. There was a bigger... It mattered more what your opponent was playing what their rules were, all this stuff was much more important before. 
but now every unit can just issue itself commands and um you just capture stuff even if you run away from it and all of this stuff in the for the sake of convenience has meant that the actual little micro decisions and the meat and potatoes tactics of moment to moment gameplay matter a lot less because you're not punished for it as hard just do your battle tactic lol right so i mean this is kind of the direction the game has gone it's rewarding different types of skills um i guess my response to the i take is deployment list milling should matter less um sure uh i guess but Man, deployment is always going to matter a lot, and list building is always going to matter a lot. I don't think you can escape from that in a meaningful way. Some heavy shooting builds inside some armies is healthy for the game, true, even when it creates some insta-losses for other armies. No. I was up, I was with you right up until instant losses. In, again, in general, if a game takes 20 minutes to even start, you can't have instant losses at all. You just can't, I don't think. I'm against that. The wind up in his first offering, just a bit outside. He tried the corner and missed. Just a bit outside. But some heavy shooting builds inside some armies is healthy for the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. The heavy shooting builds are essentially... They're essentially the combo decks of the format, if you want to consider it. If you want to consider it that way. Heavy shooting is essentially combo. Um, the oppressive stuff that everyone hates is essentially control. Control is important in metagames as well. Aggro control combo. Mid-range... Uh, dirtle value, right? Like, these things are healthy for metagames. The game should not be so unbalanced that certain matchups are non-starters. Yeah, of course. We don't even have best of three matchups for tournaments. Every round is essentially like single, like a one game, right? It's a single elim kind, not elim, but yeah. There's no sideboards in the game. You only play one game per round. You probably only have one time for one game if you go over to your friend's house to play. You can't have... You can't have rock versus paper. Get out of here. Any fug chokers? Damn, the fug chokers? From Karadran Overlords? What does KO lose to? If the KO player is good, I don't know. Certainly not me. <laughs> Whatever KO happens to lose to, it ain't me. That's for sure. <laughs> Call me Ishmael. I think GW should be way more aggressive with calling old models and armies. People have been playing 40k for ages, so I get the impression that those players are used to the older models since they remember them being new at one point. I've been playing with Yetis for a while. They're very old. I want them gone. I don't care. If AOS is supposed to be a new game separate from fantasy models older than 10 years, should simply be cut. He was to be judged by a jury of his peers. But they could find none, for he had no equals. He is right. He's right. Get him out. But if you can't replace all of them the same day, fuck you. And don't do it. Bone splitters are an essential part of auric theming. Not really and should be expanded instead of squatted. Honestly, true. Try to save them. Replace the whole line, reimagine them, AOSify them, or whatever the fuck. I think it's not okay to simply delete an army this late into Age of Sigmar. We've already been over this. True. I don't have, aside from the Wurgog stare rule, I don't have anything good to say about Bone Splitters. And I still think it's bullshit. 
if they just excise them from the game after this long. You should be in for the long haul if you're in. Are they getting rid of Bunsters? That's the rumor. So. Lemon on Rye thinks it's a tier 1. 39 months. Big streaker. Wait. Not quite. Don't read too much into that. Most Warhammer players pretend to care and pretend to play the game so they can be part of the club but will never touch a model or paint, and I think that's a shame. This is true for not just Age of Sigmar. Actually, it's the most true for 40k, and I don't think anyone's ever going to fight me on that. Um, I think we have better percentages than 40k, right? I'm talking, like, not raw numbers. I'm talking percent, like, population percent, you know? Adjusted for population. I think we have less hangers on... Or what, what's the word for it? I'm not trying to be mean here. This isn't a derogatory thing. Secondary, is that what people say? Where you don't play the game, but you like... You're kind of in it, you know? You like the art, and you like the lore, and you watch content creators, and... You've chosen an army that maybe someday you'll play, but eh, you know, like you're, you're part of it. You're not directly participating, like you haven't bought anything, and you're not probably not even trying to play, but you're like, you're kind of part of it. Uh, I guess secondary, I suppose, right? I don't know if that has a negative connotation to it or not, but I would say percentage wise, the 40k secondary percent by population is way higher than Age of Sigmar, right? Maybe it's just a feeling I get, but... Their opinions are generally wrong. No, it's just they get their opinions from someone else. That's it. They wholesale collect their opinions from some content creator. And that's what most people do anyway. But if you play the game, you at least have one filter to pass it through. And if you don't, you probably don't. Um, however, they're not players if they don't play the game and don't own anything. Then they're, by definition not players. I don't know what you would call them. Fan? A viewer or something? I'm not sure. But yeah, not players. I know it's a figure of speech, but... Uh, yeah, maybe enjoyers, right? I don't think this is a shame. Do what you want. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I don't think I feel strongly about this. If there's a ton of people that don't play, but they kind of, like, consume some content around it, I mean, thanks for the fucking subscription. Not hurting anybody. Maybe they're being responsible with their money in ways that somebody who buys it but really can't afford it is, I don't know, just... I don't know, man. Thanks for the fucking prime. And do what you want. The high number of named heroes makes armies feel less like your guys and therefore less customizable. True. Too many random fucking foot heroes. Too many. Too many. Your guys is so important for all of Warhammer. Maybe it's less important for 40k because that game, it seems like people are obsessed with history and structure and fine detail and things like that. And most things I don't care about. But AOS, especially your dudes, is coded into our DNA after the great battle of first edition Firestorm campaign where Games Workshop relented and came down on our side, the creative side, and never forget that battle, because it happened. So yeah, your guy's cool, 
There's too many foot heroes released anyway, which I'm kind of co-opting this. But yeah, sure. What was the battle? So, in first edition, there was a campaign supplement released called Firestorm Campaign. And it was the introduction of proto-Cities of Sigmar, which would later become a battle tome and an army called Cities of Sigmar. Um, and it was ways to different cities that you could use. Uh, oh, this city had these rules and that city had those rules. And they tr in the book, they're like, you have to paint them like this. And if you paint them like that, they're from that city. And if you paint them like this, they're from this city. And we're going to enforce this at our events. And the entirety of every player of Age of Sigmar rose up and said, no. We will paint our guys however the fuck we want to, and we will use whatever rules for them however the fuck we want to. Because this game, this, this game, AOS, this isn't 40k, where you have to paint your blood angels red and your ultramarines blue, whatever. Mm -mm. We don't give a fuck about that. This game is the hobby-focused creative game at the time. That's how it was. And so we will do whatever we want. And we will not only ignore that, but like rise up against it. And they, and they, Games Workshop relented. They took that out of those packs. And they're like, okay, this game is hobby focused. Do you care about artistic creativity and expression? And you'll use whatever rules you want and make your guys look like whatever your guys should look like. And that was it. Do you have to paint Blood Angels red and shit in 40k? In the olden days, maybe. But they've been moving away from that. Keep in mind, I'm talking about eight years ago in Age of Sigmar at this point, right? Anyway. And then we also did that with um, weapon options and stuff, too. If the axes give you plus one rend and the swords give you plus one to wound, but the swords look cooler, you use swords because they look cooler. And then, as far as the rules, the plus one rend rules. Most people probably don't even know what the other choice is because every time they fight against that unit, it's using the good rule. Harmless and your dudes creativity above, above all. Bring back faction battalions from AOS 2. Interesting, these were fun. Having them cost points was a balance knob, although they were shit at it. If they can't even balance five of them, I don't know how they could balance 205 of them. Uh, but I suppose you could say that about anything. No, I think no. You can bring back the fun rules that worked well for each army from those battalions, and you could put those rules in back into the army somehow. It doesn't have to be battalions. We're rules writers. We can do anything we want. If you liked Ural Bad, you can just give that, you can add that as a sub-faction bonus on top of whatever else the sub-faction bonus gets. You can find a way to put those cool rules you remember back into the battle tomes without bringing back the hornet's nest of 240 point single drop battalions and shit like that. So in general, no, there's a better way. Movement is far too precise. Some form of simplification would be good. How can you get simpler than using a tape measure and just moving to the... What do they mean by this? What did he mean by this? Some number of options greater than one but significantly less than near infinite would be good. Huh? Huh? Can anyone explain this? The person's having a stroke, or maybe I am.
movement is far too precise. Is it though? Because everything is done in inches. Um, and they don't even use half inches. They use full inches. We don't even use halves. You get halves sometimes if you split five and a half or something, but yeah, it, that's not very precise, right? Well, I guess it, it has to be exactly, but... Uh, I guess sometimes we use half inches, like, for coherency and charging. Okay, we, we use some half inches... Some number of options greater than one, but significantly less than near infinite. What, is, what do you mean by near infinite? Um, I'm reading chat. I'm seeing if anybody easy. They don't actually play. I don't. I don't know. This could be a language barrier thing, maybe. You'll make a mental stretch and maybe um, it means it's too technical, like you have to be too precise with pile-ins and whatnot, maybe? Do they want a grid system? I don't... No, I don't... It doesn't seem that they're implying any sort of grid. Hitting the Zaza. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, uh, sorry about that. Or good work. I don't know what you mean. While painted is usually better than gray on the table... This is not an absolute. You can, in fact, paint a mini so poorly that it is worse than just a gray model. One can imagine a hypothetical situation where, like, it's a gray model and they just, they just drew, like, a swastika on it with a sharpie and nothing else, right? Like, okay, I can, I can imagine... A, a, un, a like a possibility physically of something that's worse uh, than not painting, sure. You could um, have AI art paint for you or something. Uh, I don't, you know. It... I don't know what the point is, though. What's your point? What ought we do about this? What, um... Painted is usually better than gray. You can paint something so bad that it's worse than a gray. Maybe. In the infinite universe, I suppose it's possible. But what is your point? Is your point that you not painting is okay? At least I didn't... I don't know, uh, at least I didn't paint it with slurs all over it or something. Like, uh, uh what do you, do you want a fucking trophy? Do you want some head pats, little head pats? Oh, there you go. You're actually good for not painting your stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really judge people too terrifically harshly based on their painting or even if they haven't painted. I just play the game. If they have any intent of painting it eventually, or they're working on it, like, oh, fair enough. I don't see the big deal. It's possible to paint something really bad, I guess, but who gives a shit? All I'm looking for is you tried. That's it. That's all I'm looking for. No armies should be called, comma, but bone splitters aren't a proper army and look racist, and they should be called anyway. Alright, help me out here. 
I've seen chorfs who to me you know I've, I went to the, I've been to the World War one and two history museum and looked at their posters and propaganda and stuff I could draw some very very good comparisons right for some games workshop stuff um bone splitters are just naked orcs I don't get the use of racist here They're orcs that are naked. Uh, witch doctor stuff? Is that racist? A witch doctor? Like, even a silly one? I don't know. That's just kind of what the thing is. It's a witch doctor. Kind of like that's a samurai and he's a goofy samurai and that's racist against Japanese people. Well, I don't. Is it? I don't know. I feel like this this word has to mean something. It can't just mean everything. We're losing it. We're slipping. the The meaning of this word is very close to meaningless at this point, uh, at least in America. So we, we can't let it go. Or maybe just let it go and come up with a new one. I'm not sure. But yeah, don't call them. Just make them cool. Racism is when a culture is referenced. Yeah, I guess. Or something. <laughs> is this colonialism holding a Wargog prophet? <laughs> Racism is when, cul when a culture is referenced in any way. <laughs> yeah. Intent matters, but also being conscious of real-world discrimination and erasing inclusion of that discrimination is important. Maybe it's the savage references with, like, the boar boys. I don't, I don't get it, I guess. You think it's because orcs are the bad guys? I don't know. Bone Splitters straight up used to be called Savage Orcs. Yeah, I think in the in the old game they were. Or maybe before they got their book or something. I don't know. Racist against Orcs, perhaps. Ah, man. The life of a person who needs to expend as much energy as possible to find a way to be offended on behalf of an ancient culture that is no longer around. All right. Of orcs, I guess. I don't know. It's tiring. She's saying Warhammer Fantasy Battle is racist. Some art might be. Or perhaps, I don't know, racist. Maybe in poor taste. Can we say in poor taste? Um, 40k is taking the aggro for us on shitting the bed rules-wise in addition to corralling the cringe players. We should be grateful. AOS is the second line of defense for the best games GW makes, which are the side games. Damn, I was with you until you talked about the side games. Uh, damn, I don't care about side games. Like, holy shit. Um, so, I don't know. 40k is taking the aggro for us about... I don't care. Twitter, uh... Twitter take detected. Chill. These these aren't factions vying for control of complaining about whatever. Uh... Log out. <laughs> it's okay. Chill. Mm, Tay Barracuda, thanks for gifting us up. The J Wedge. Appreciate it. Maybe just maybe people need to stop getting professionally offended. Yeah, it's tiresome. Uh, and you can kind of tell when it's uh, insincere, shall we say. Which is almost always. Has AOS shit the bed this edition? 
Yeah, a little bit. Battle tactics are, a, I would say, a spectacular failure. Um, But, aside from that, though, everything's pretty good, man. All-out defense is a little too strong. One drop battalion is better than all the other ones by a little too much, but nothing is fucked. You know, you can quibble about this or that, but yeah. Battle tactics were a huge miss and are kind are just kind of an absolute chore, but you know, we're definitely in the right we're going in the right direction. Like kind of sick. Oh, for Games Workshop standards, I don't even think... Yeah, definitely didn't shit the bed. If we're comparing it to other Games Workshop stuff, it's a it's a resounding success. The game's never been more balanced. It's great. Something like 21 of the armies you are, like, good. Qu Quote-unquote, right? Like, that's a lot of factions to juggle. I don't know. Next. Rounds should be three hours, but use chess clocks for terminal play. 30 minutes for setup, 30 minutes per round. This is too much time for setup. You don't need 30 minutes. 30 minutes per round, giving each player 15 to do what they... Yeah, just divide it up. Yeah, probably true. Um, the idea of chess clocks is scary to people. I could see a social anxiety thing keeping a lot of people away because of chess clocks. That's the downside to them. The upside is that it's pretty fair. You know, how could it be more fair than equal time to each player? And you actually want games to end. My, my biggest contention isn't even equal time and slow play or whatever. It's not even my biggest problem. It's a shit way to end the game when you run out of time and you have to talk to your opponent about what would have happened in the last two battle rounds. Like, you're just making up fan fiction to decide who wins. Like, that shit sucks. And you kind of have to do it, but I don't like that. I think you should play. If I had another draw stamp, yeah. So, kind of agree. Even though there are big downsides. Yeah, you do need a lot more time in early rounds rather than late. You are right, loot FGC. So, the we can quibble with the numbers here, but uh, in general, it would probably be a good thing. However, um, it would push people away who are too nervous about being on the clock, so to speak. Stormcast will never be Marines, and they're actually holding AOS back in popularity. I don't think they're holding AOS back in popularity. I mean, unless you're comparing it against some imaginary whatever the fuck, right? In my head, damn, if, if instead of Stormcast there was the most cool thing in the universe, then AOS would be sure, but... Um, yeah, they won't be Marines. It's clear that the community of Age of Sigmar doesn't want Marines. And it's good that they're not Marines. I don't know that they're holding AOS back in popularity. Maybe they were in the first edition, but not really anymore. All the new Stormcast art is fucking sick. And that's all you really care about. If GW leaned into COS as the main, AOS explodes. Not really. Not really. It's a good idea, but probably wouldn't notice much of a difference if, if we're talking about popularity. But it is a good idea. Being the starter army is holding Stormcast back. That's the real take, Azri. Damn, he's just right. Cities is a terrible army to try to sell the game with for new players and new painters. True. Great for lore and grounding the setting and all of that, though. Not good for new players. 
that's the real reason why they had to do it, kind of. It's a business idea. You want your poster child faction to be dog shit easy to paint. Big, open armor spaces with almost no texture on them. So you can just put paint on them and put a one wash on it and you're done. Almost no faces because you're scared of that. That's it. It's, it's a marketing thing. That's why... That's why it is that way. Um, Cities of Sigmar, from a model perspective, is for advanced fucking painters. It's intimidating almost. It is what it is. Popularity has made AOS worse over from 2 to 3 and will continue to 4. The rules or the game? What, what do you mean, I guess? I don't know. Do people find faces that challenging? Yes. Yeah, especially eyes. If you have to actually paint the eyes on, it's a nightmare that you will try to do five times and then quit the game and leave your house and never go back to your house and just walk into the desert and die. Um, that's the average first-time painter uh, trying to paint a face. Yeah, it happened to my cousin. <laughs> Anyway, um, I don't think so. I don't see the game having changed because of AOS's popularity. I don't see it. If 3rd edition got rid of priority, I'd be like, okay, they're kowtowing to the masses that maybe would be interested in the game, but they don't want the double turn thing. If, th if something like that happened... Then I could be like, ooh, the game is changing for popularity's sake. But I don't necessarily see it in our current timeline. Yeah. It, mm, I, this happens with a lot of games. So far it hasn't happened to AOS. At least detectably. Edition should last a minimum of two years after the last army book is released. Kind of arbitrary, but I think additions are coming too quick. Agree. I think every army's rules should be released the day the edition is out. And any any wait longer than that is not only a little unprofessional, but downright insulting. It's, it's hella shit. I can't believe that, that that's like what they do. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. Editions are coming a little too quick. And the fact that every army doesn't get new edition rules instantly when the edition comes out is toxic to people who actually play the game. But clearly their business model to make sure that they're always selling something every quarter forever. So it'll never change. It's, it's their business model. It fucking sucks for players, but... Uh, all right. You don't become a billion dollar company making the best game ever. You become a billion dollar company selling it the best and marketing it the best. 40k guard routinely use last edition's codex every cycle. Yeah, that's bullshit. Uh, I would be embarrassed for that to be the case if I was running a game. But, well, here we are. Battle tactics are a lot of fun and making them harder is a good thing. Having, a, having perfect scores should not be possible on any mission unless you are demolishing your opponent army list wise or just being better. All right. Um, I thought this too, when I was playing one game every two months or so. Uh, but I don't know, after, after I started playing one game every two weeks or so, battle tactics quickly turned to dust in my mouth and became ash and, um, kind of slowly sort of ruined and poisoned the whole experience. So I understand where this person is coming from. I thought this too very early on when I hadn't played them too much. But three years into the addition of playing them, and especially when I was playing a lot, uh, they fucking suck. So um, it's not like a big L take. It's just like this is the take you have when you've only played 
four or five games of third edition. So like I was there too, buddy. I was there too. <laughs> Reminder, the battle never technically starts. Fellow battle tactic enjoyer, you like who said this? The ship has sailed due to the design of GHB tactics being radically different from battle tome tactics. Yeah, um, the next round of battle tomes, if they include tactics at all, will look a lot different. They'll look a lot more like the GHB ones, I imagine, and a lot less like the buy this model or use this sub faction or whatever ones. You'd be fine with GW putting out a press release saying, Hi, listen, we want to make a better game. So we're going to be delaying the launch of the next edition in order to develop rules for all factions to release at the same time. With physical battle tomes coming out in waves. Uh, of course, the sheep known as shareholders would instantly jump ship. I think, aren't they like only partially public? Maybe the British stock market works differently than the American one. But I tried to check their stocks a few times. And it looked very strange, like it was weird in big chunks and stuff. I don't know. It's possible they're not, they're not fully public or something. I don't know what it is, but I don't know if this is a shareholder thing. Maybe that's just how Brit British stock markets look. Um, so I, I can't, I can't really say. I know it is, it is a listed public company, but maybe it's just different. Maybe that's just how they do it over there. Um, yeah, you would only have to do, you would only have to have that uncomfortableness one time, the Hungry Panda, right? You'd only have to wait the extra year once, and then that's just part of the cycle, you know? As soon as they're done doing all the battle tomes for the next edition, they just start on the next ones. And then they've given themselves four years to finish those. And so it would only have to be awkward for probably a quarter or two. But, uh, I think a lot of the, what drives the sales of Battle Tomes is the rules. And I think they know that. So I don't know. GW getting involved in tournaments is bad for everyone. I mean, they've always ran tournaments. I assume what this person means is like golden tickets and I don't know, cash prizes or something, which yes, that's a, that's a terrifically bad idea for them. And um, their game cannot handle money at the top, nor should it try to. So, cold take. Simply true. The entire Z Disciples of Zinch aesthetic is wrong. True. It should be Cloak and Dagger, Baba Yaga, Culty Coven stuff, not just magic. Stupid gumball people in that color blue. Did I write this? The birds can stay. Okay, I didn't write this. If you want, but less gaudy and more witchy horror. True. Uh, true and real. Almost based. Uh, if only you got rid of the bird stuff. Um, hey, great work. Cursling is tight, though. <laughs> I stood up and I clapped. Yeah, they should be pondering more orbs. There should be more Del Toro stuff, less gaudy, shirtless bird head looking ass. Make them the creepy whisperers, you know, the worm tongues of the of the mortal realms. All their secrets. I don't know. Yeah, do that shit. Gone Summoner is fucking tight, though. Yeah, Demir Mages. Cursling is awesome. Gaunt Summoner the, what I call Delta, like the Pan's Labyrinth kind of, for sure. Demons need a complete redesign from the ground up. None of it is interesting in the slightest, and those that stand out were made after malign sorcery. Damn. Shit. Hold on.
like 80% very correct. You got me. Like 80% right. Yep. Especially the battle line stuff. Holy shit. Blood letters. Stupid. Nurgle shit demons. Stupid. Gumball bubblegum ass foam from Zinch. Stupid. Damonettes. Trash. Oh man, he's right. God damn, he's right. Yeah. I'm almost mad because of how right he is. Next. Six up ward army wide is not impactful enough to be worth the time spent rolling. True, I clapped. I clapped. Six up ward, I sleep. Five up, real shit. Don't talk to me. I'm sorry, Haywo, but Beast Claw isn't ever getting anything new and it hurts me to say it out loud. Yeah, probably. Um... In, in keeping with the, you know, us getting folded into Gutbuster Ass Army and stuff like that, yeah. Um, it was really the Hunter that caused me to think about that, maybe. When Ogres got a brand new Hunter, and it wasn't even a replacement for the fine cast Hunter, that's when I started becoming concerned. Um, good try, good meme. Artifacts and command traits should be removed instead for more robust sub-faction rules. Wrong. It should be both. The old sub-faction rules were awesome. They made them smaller, probably only one sentence, and boring now. Go back to second edition, except not taking your artifact and command trait. Both. Everyone will get it, so it's balanced, it's fair. Why not both unironically? In addition. Yeah, just don't lock the artifact and command trait. Gold. In fact, dumbing down the bonuses you get from the sub-factions was one of the bad things about Third Ed. I weep for the lost interesting rules that were replaced with nothing in the new battle tomes. God models should not be in the game. Damn. Brainlit zero IQ. L take. l -ist take. Why is the god of death, magic, earthquakes fighting in what is realistically a skirmish sized battle? Oh, never mind. Hold on. I rescind my comment. I thought this person was going to be talking about there we should ban all the unique named hero one because that's fucking negative room temperature IQ this they just mean that Nagash should be too powerful to even be represented at 2000 points and that's correct that's correct you're right but here's the solution you call his war scroll Avatar of Nagash. Fucking fixed. Good work. We did it. Iron Guts should go to five wounds and a three up save, but lose fights twice for a thematic ability. Iron Guts should have the most impressive stats on a war scroll in the entire game. Uh. Bobo detected. My boba meter is off the charts. <laughs> this baby's screaming. Sure, I don't play Gutbusters, so I hope you get whatever you want. Um, just make Thundertusk good for the first time in six fucking years. I clapped. Also, Mornfang. Can we get allegiance abilities for them? Fucking A. Anyway. Battleline is there to protect shit players from not bringing chaff and is a welcome addition. You didn't have to be that mean, but true. It also gives your hammer something to hammer and feels nice, doesn't it? It does feel nice to slap some chaff off the table and then get countercharged and lose. Oh, wait. 
Alright. Yeah, that's that's essentially what Battle Line is supposed to be for, and Games Workshop has forgot this. They pass out Battle Line if way too liberally, way too much. Um and so the problem is that everybody just chooses one of the infinite ways to get literally anything battle line. And then no one plays chaff after all. So what was the point? Anyway. You didn't have to be that mean about it, but you're not wrong. Crew boys are, on, are the cooler version of orcs, and I'm glad they exist. Um, a little too, just a touch too Lord of the Rings for me. And I don't like the Popeye proportions of tiny leg, big upper body. But they look great for what they are. Um, great work. I like Iron Jaws too, though. I don't think I have a favorite. Add a few more units. Crocodilian cavalry, please. And I think they'll be more popular than Iron Jaws. Um... They're probably more popular than Iron Jaws technically because they were in one of the most pop, most best-selling starter boxes ever. But then again, everyone just plays Big Wah anyway because soup free. It's hard to describe or define what popular is, especially when I don't have any data. Croc Cav is a good idea though. Great plastic players shouldn't be shamed. They single-handedly keep the company alive. The, they don't. The players that play and paint are 5% of people who buy from GW. It's less than that. Um, they don't single-handedly keep the company alive. You know who single-handedly keeps the company alive? Your mom. <laughs> In 10 years ago... Going to a GW store and buying a random box of fucking anything. Giving it to her kid who never even opens it. Ever. That's who keeps Games Workshop alive. Is parents at Christmas time buying stuff that their kids will never have the patience to even assemble, much less paint? That's... that's it. Um, I think people who literally play and paint... It's it's hard to just invent numbers. It's less than 5%. It just is. Touch grass and then a paintbrush? Fucking got him. True. Just paint your men. You can take as long as you want. I'm not gonna rush you. But, you know kind of a painting game, right? Do that. Do the thing. Touch grass and then a paintbrush. Jesus. What is this self-righteous? People who are too lazy to paint are actually the heroes. We know what you're doing. The real heroes are the nameless, faceless, endless consumers who don't even open the boxes, much less assemble gray plastic. Those are the real heroes. Um, chill. <laughs> Touch primer. Endless spells are bad and dumb and should be eaten from the game. I almost ate the mic. I almost ate it. Endless spells were a cool idea. They were a cool idea. They have never had rules that are good. I don't mean good powerful. I don't mean good strong. I don't mean good you play with them or take them. I mean good. It's a cool idea with mostly not great sculpts, if I'm honest, that has never been implemented even close to to correctly into the game. I don't think that means we should give them up. I don't think they need to be yeeted from the game exactly. Just implement them properly. That's all. 
the pendulum does finally swing. They did that. They should not cost points. It's like the first thing. All of their rules should be entirely different. That's, there shouldn't be a special time set out uh, within the rules of the core rules where this is how you're going to use endless... This is the phase where endless spells you get a chance to do. They're like they're like shoehorned into the game in a gro in a weird way. I don't chill. Got me acting up. Why would you <laughs> How are you gonna have an endless spell that appears, does one effect, and then gets rid and then goes away? That's a fucking spell. That's what a spell always does. If it's an endless spell, why does it enter, do one thing, and then dispel itself? This isn't like I went to the movies to see the never-ending story and I was mad that it ended. Like, this is like... There aren't that many endless spells. We can think of ones that are supposed to all stay around. That's an end spell. It's... Uh, chill. I'm out of drink. New Pepsi, please. Because apparently, the next one here, we got a fucking 2,000 word novel over here. Yo. Wrong scene. All right, we're good. We are back. Time for the 200 word essay. Let's get out the encyclopedia. Get out the dictionary. Get out your sleeping bags. Ahem. Put on more bifocals. Oh, we got the kid. A little editorialism from SJ Arcane. <clears throat> Hold on. GW needs to figure out if it wants to have combined army books or separate army books. Ahem. Flesh Eater Quartz and Soul Blight are the same army in the way that Iron Jaws, Cruel Boys, Bone Splitters, or Montrise Beast Claw are the same armies. Either split the destruction armies into their own books because of thematic differences, or combine all the vampires in the same book because of their thematic and miniature line similarities. They have the technology either way, just make a decision. I would go even further than just a split. I would remove all Death Rattle from the game because of OBR in the Old World and replace them with zombie equivalents. I would take Vargeists and Terrorgeists out of G-Lords and zombie dragons out of FEC. I would get rid of Bone Splitters, since most of their stuff exists thematically inside orcs. Iron Jaws and Cruel Boys each have to support their own, as do the Maw Tribes. I would then add a handful of kits to Beast Claw Raiders and give them the support of the fan and completely separate army identities into their own books. He's casting a spell. <laughs> He's casting a spell. It's called sleep. I'm casting a level one sleep spell. Okay. Can I summarize this in a way that everyone will agree with? Stop souping destruction armies. Give them their own books in the exact same way that you give all the Order armies and all the Chaos armies and all the Undead armies their own different books. Because Iron Jaws are different enough from Cruel Boys and Gutbusters are different enough from Beast Claw as fucking Daughters of Cain are to Darkling Covens. Or I didn't have Deepkin is to Illuminath. Just give them their own books. It's insulting to soup them all together like this. It shows a lack of respect. It makes them less special. It's lazy. It's shit. Everything else he said, whatever. <laughs> Where's the closest games workshop? Fingers on the home row there, friend. Good first comment. Yo, let him cook. How are you going to tell me skeletons shouldn't be in the game? 
look. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Look. I'm not saying everything in this book is good, but this the first few chapters, I'm on board. Alright. It's anti-sue for destruction, but pro-sue for death. I think that was meant as a comparison. Like, you gave the Death Armies different books, and they should, and I agree, and so do it for Destruction 2. Uh, that's how I'm choosing to read it. Anyway, great work. Did he write this? No, he did not. Um... The pity hero thing needs to stop. Yes. True. Maximum true. Real facts. True logics detected. Yes. Stop. Fucking stop. Please. Please. <laughs> no. And for you, a brand new foot hero. I'll put it next to the 28 I already have in Stormcraft. Please. I guess it's better than nothing. No. I'll wait longer to get something real. Stop. Stop it. You know what Fire Slayers doesn't fucking need? Another goddamn foot hero. Or Stormcast. Stop it. It's shocking how bloated the leader section is. Yes, it's trash. And how limited their troops are. True. Damn, did I write this? I understand that it is more of a cost thing. Well, sort of, but you could be doing anything with costs. That's fine. And it doesn't make sense business-wise to release a faction's new units piecemeal. I'm still not a huge fan of the current model of things. Yeah. Look, Games Workshop could be doing way different stuff that's way more predatory and way more uh, only profit-focused. But they're not. They're not profit at all costs. They would be laying off a thousand workers just like the video game industry if they were trying to profit at all costs. They're just not. I think they're just really wibbly-wobbly. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of the time. Uh... They released the hero, it sells well. Eh, people like heroes. Buying one hero um, probably has good spillover with people trying to make their D&D &D characters and not even caring about GW games at all. You know? It's easy to paint one foot hero. And if you buy a box of ten dudes, it's much more daunting and probably a rougher on-ramp onto the whole thing. Like, I get that. Do they even have a thousand workers? I don't think so, actually. They have a surprisingly small amount of actual employees for a company of their market cap, I think. So anyway, their point is that I get it. It's good for selling. But please, God, there's, there's enough. A person can walk into Games Workshop and buy a cool-looking foot hero for every faction. They're fine, right? Hot take, AOS models aren't even that good for D&D. Probably not, because they're so specific, right? They're so custom, maybe? Anyway, cold take, good work. Cast unbind rolls should have the same plus or minus modifier limit that hit and wound rolls have. No. Disagree. It's okay if we have the freedom to make these however high or low we feel like, depending on the army and the situation and all this other stuff. It's okay. You don't have to homogenize every single part of the game. It's stupid that an opponent with a bunch of dispels at plus three just means you never get to cast anything. That's what it means to be a magic army. You are a magic army. You're great at magic. You get your spells through. It's stupid that Iron Jaws do a lot of damage in melee combat. Bro, that's what they that's what they do. They participate in melee combat. It's stupid that KO can shoot. They're a shooting army. Everybody gets their special shit that they're too good at. But if everybody's too good at something, then it's fine. This is just what they're too good at. Um, 
Yeah, I'll take. I don't like spellcasting because my army can't stop spellcasting. Hey, it could be worse. AOS has become too bloated with ancient models and universal rules, artifacts, spells, and abilities. I mean, it's less bloated now with ancient models than it ever has been before. Age of Sigmar got rid of maybe a third of all of its models over the course of 1st edition to 2nd edition to 3rd. So, I mean, that doesn't mean that it's not too bloated still. I'm just saying that it's been jettisoning. It's it's been taking buckets of water, I guess, uh, and throwing them overboard. And universal rules. I don't think. Oh man, hey, hot take. Agree. There's no reason to have universal artifacts, spells, or abilities anymore. There just isn't. Every book has them. The reason we had universal rules in the first place was that every book or every army didn't have a book. And so you needed something to play with while you were waiting for a book for your army, but we have that now. There's no point to universal artifacts, spells, and abilities. At least from an enhancement point of view. You know, you can still have Arcane Bolt, Mystic Shield, stuff like that, but from an enhancement point of view? Yeah, this was a band-aid because everybody didn't have rules yet, and now we do, so why? No need. Get them out. Yeah, they got rid of all the ugly Forge World models, which was every Forge World model. For AOS, anyway. Do you still need Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield? Maybe. You could have it. You could not have it. Kind of depends. No Universal Spell Lore? Nah. I don't think it's really necessary, no. I don't think it's weighing the game down. I don't think it's a problem. It just doesn't seem very necessary to me. That's all. Thormcast shouldn't have been all humans. True. They pull from all the races canonically. Champions from all races of order. Yes. Yes. Imagine suits of Annihilator armor in the style of a Croxigore. Oof. Dude, imagine the fucking wideness of a goddamn dwarf in Stormcast armor. He's he's in the fucking Minecraft cube just running around with a golden axe. Let's go. Yes, true. Mixed race units. Um, I can't believe they haven't done this already. It was a terrible idea not to. Simply true. Not even a hot take. 100% correct. Bilateral is prime. Dude, Ogre Storm Drake. Let's go. Great work. It would be a better game if there were no if X then no piling rules. Um. I don't know. I don't think these aren't that common, are they? These are pretty rare. This person plays against IDK, right? There are a few no pile in stuff in the game. I don't know. I feel that those are kind of tactical. Sure, they're annoying. But any control ability that does anything is going to be, I guess, annoying. Sloppity's the worst defender? Okay. I mean, they might just be taking this guy's advice. I think, yeah, it, Brandy made. They're probably reducing that to be the one-inch pilot instead because it's what the most recent ones are. So, regardless of how I feel about this, first of all, it's pretty rare. They seem to be moving towards the one-inch thing. Maybe it's a problem that solves itself. <sighs> all right. I am not sure if this is a hot take, <laughs> but I am sure that it is long. 
but I don't think there should be any animosity between Old World fans and AOS fans. Should be. Well, there, there sure is. The My Game is Better is pretty... It's not about My Game is Better. You're fundamentally misunderstanding the situation. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you right there. So what had happened was there was this game called Warhammer Fantasy and it was very unpopular for years and then it died. And then after it died, the company officially killed it. And all the people who played it were mad because that sucks when the game you like and play is killed. That shit sucks. And then they came out with a brand new game that sucked even worse, arguably. And so what are you going to do as a community that is freshly mad at the company who just killed your game and replaced it with essentially the Final Fantasy XIV of war games? You're going to lash out and be angry. And you're going to be angry at the people who like the new game. Because they, like, represent everything wrong with the, the, whatever, right? And then about six months, maybe a year after AOS 1 came out, it started to get actually good. And you were probably unaware of that or just like, and you stayed mad forever. And so it's, it's not really a my game is better. It's a you represent the company being essentially right in killing my game. Because AOS is stupendously more popular than Warhammer Fantasy, um, just on sales, right? And that's like insulting. Like that that sucks. So it's not really my game better. It's like it's like fuck you. It's not like my game is better. It's like fuck you. Anyway, let's continue. That said, I don't see a lot. I I don't see this a lot. So maybe I am worried about nothing. But we don't need more brother wars messing with fun, non-mutually exclusive hobbies. Uh, also, as fun as Slice the Darkness models are to look at, I sometimes wish they were less spiky. This is the most milk toast human being ever. Why can't everyone just get along? Can't everyone just be nice to each other all the time? Also, there's too many spikes on Slaves to Darkness. Why do you have to paint them so dark? How come we can't paint them in better colors? Also, the boatload of options you get in a lot of the kits sometimes feel a bit wasteful. I don't like to waste plastic. It's bad for the environment. Um, a box of Chosen, you get about two weapons for each Chosen, but then each one can only wield one, and you get I, I get I just get too much value out of this box. I'm not sure of any solutions on the production side of this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never change. Whoever this is, this is this is like a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, excellent meme. Top Kex, good work. I want less value. There's too many spikes on Slaves to Darkness models. The laziest, just generic po uh, positivity blob, do, do nothing, say nothing. Love it. Great work. Skaven and Cities are the best two armies in the game. Uh, well, you're half right. So, hey, five out of seven. Good work. In defense of Skaven, Skaven is probably the most unique and interesting faction that GW has come up with. Historically speaking, I suppose. It doesn't seem to be just kind of ripped off of something else, which a lot of stuff is. You know? Anyway, yeah, Skaven are cool. And cities are cool. Cold take. Secondaries are bad act. Cool are lately. Um, secondaries like Orbiters or um, Battle Tactics. The game should primarily be about positioning, killing via threat assessment and tempo. True! Oh, this person knows me. They're writing... They're writing this one for me. 
If you want predetermined complex hoops to jump through, if they're not complex. They aren't complex. Uh, so I know they don't truly believe this, and they're just writing what I want to hear now. I see your game. For simulated big brain moves that are in fact unnecessary, being contemplate 40k, keep this shit out of here, yeah. We essentially agree. Um, teacher's pet over here, trying to type what I like. Um, but you're accidentally correct. Good work. <laughs> Battle tactics are complex. Oh, word, kill that unit. Roll a die on a four up, you get your battle to M. How complex. All right. We hold this truth to be self edited. Yeah. AOS games at 2K for five rounds take way too long. Probably true. And the most interesting stuff happens at the beginning anyway. Disagree. To be honest, some of the coolest narrative style things end up happening at the end of the game. Where everybody's dead. And you got that one foot hero and he actually has to enter combat and do something maybe. Uh, where you, you have a, you know, oh shit, my grand strategy, uh, there needs to be no wizards and so... A slaughtermaster has to charge Gotrick to get himself killed so I get a three points or something like um you know I, I get what they're saying so you know in general I agree but the the end of the game stuff is actually kind of cool a lot of the times not always but anyway good work I think terrain should matter more Careful, Icarus. <laughs> um, you're probably right, but I'm concerned. Because everything... Man, every time they think something should matter more in the game, it matters more in a really fucking annoying way. Coherency should matter more, first edition player. True. True. Oh, wait, no, stop, not like that. Holy within everywhere. Uh, no, stop. You know, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know. People say shooting is so strong only because they don't build tables like 40k. They build long and wide space skating rinks. So there's no real way to avoid the shooting. Yeah, mostly true. Um, Cold take, mostly true. Shooting is naturally going to be better than melee because you do not have to put yourself into a risky position to deal damage. That's like the benefit of shooting. The benefit of melee is that you get to do it on your opponent's turn, but even still, shooting is probably in a vacuum better. Um, but, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, mostly, mostly true. Did we have any good double turn hot takes? Not so far, no. I'm surprised. Nobody has really brought up the double turn yet. Um, mostly because... Uh, most of these takes are from people who actually play the game, and so... Um, they don't really have any hot takes about the double turn. <laughs> maybe that's a maybe that's a hot take. People in the scene need to be less hyper anti-competitive. Yeah, true. There's some toxic casual bullshit out there, and it's um weird and kind of gross. Um, they had a bad experience with a that guy, and they think that's what competitive players are. And it's so fucking funny too. Because competitive 40k player, you know, is, is like, that's like a joke. Ah, jeez. I, I don't mean to be mean, but like, in the, like in the competitive magic scene, in the competitive FGC scene, competitive chess... Like, you hear, oh, this person's competitive at a Games Workshop game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good for him. 
Like, it's... That's... And, and then to see the casual players of Games Workshop being like, this person's competitive. Oh, that's... That's competitive to you? Jesus. My man just straight up follows the rules most of the time. That's competitive to you, huh? Oh, all right. Bold. Uh, yeah, uh, this is weird. A lot of people will be doing this. Uh, I'll, there's a lot of like... Man. Th this person is copying lists from the internet. I come up with my own lists for a Warhammer. And I'm looking at it like, bro, your whole fucking army has 11 choices. How unique can you possibly get? There's 50,000 cards in Magic. Your faction has 11 boxes you can buy. How ingenious exactly could you get? What do you mean? L net listing. What? <laughs> this net decking ogre player who plays the only three good models in the art. Damn, dude. <laughs> Unlike me, a creative. Alright. I delved deeply into the into the back pages of my Fire Slayer book that has three battle line in it, and I found the third battle line. Oh shit, he's a genius. Now, I'm making fun of this, right? There is actually mm, innovation in AOS. I'm not saying there's not. I'm just saying there isn't enough to be toxic about net decking. Like it's special. That's all. Uh, to the point that it's humorous to me. Um, switch hats, sure. We'll go for the cream team. There actually, yeah, there there is innovation. It's not that there's not. It's just that there's so little opportunity for that that it's comical, like coming from some other game, maybe. Maybe this is, maybe this is other game chauvinism or something like that. Uh, you see a person get shitty at somebody because they ran the good unit because they thought it looked cool. The rest of the army was clearly not competitive at all. I don't see what the big deal is. How dare you, sir, play the unit in your army that's good in a adversarial one versus one game with win conditions. How dare you play the good unit in your army? Do you even like fun? Do you even know what fun is? Fun is playing shit that sucks and doesn't work. And then losing. That's fun. Win at all cost. God, just burns me up. When players play stuff that actually works half the time. And can enter combat and kill something. Absolutely disgusting. True fun is playing bad units that don't work or get to do anything. And then lose. And make it the other person's problem <laughs> and shame them fuck you <laughs> anyway yeah um that's ridiculous as in worthy of ridicule I think a lot of people who play competitive 40k or AOS didn't come from a TCG or FCG or poker. They don't know what they don't... Yeah, you can't know what you don't know. Trouble vision. Keep in mind, this is like we're reading through hot takes, so we're going to have some meme -y content about it. You know, you don't know what you don't know. I've never been to prison. So, um, I don't know. When I complain about something... Somebody who went to prison, probably, I don't know, maybe they had it worse, right? But. You made a lore accurate army and now I'm mad. It's not doing well. Stupid sweaty nightbeards. Look, you care what you care about. I'm just asking you to own it. Be honest with yourself 
and with everyone else. If you don't care about performance, not saying winning, I'm saying performance. If you don't care about performance and you build an entire army that doesn't care about performance and then you don't perform well, you literally cannot be mad. It's illegal. Uh, I, you, that's what you did. You ordered a pizza and when the pizza came to your door, you're like, what the fuck is this? And sir, you ordered a pizza. <sighs> so I did. Like, what? What do you want? You are the master of your destiny and this is what you have brought. All right, you've brought this forth. I just want you to prove it. I think they're lying. I think they're lying to themselves and to others and trying to posture and create a toxic social environment where you can bully people into losing to you by shaming them into playing shit that's worse than your shit. And secretly you know that if you went win at all cost, if you did, if you played the most powerful everything, and if you actually tried, the tournament players would still fucking stomp you. And you secretly know it. And so you have to come up with a pre-excuse and loudly tell the world about it to lower the expectations and protect your fragile self. Copium. Anyway. I noticed there was only one hot take left, so I had to go on a little bit of a tangent. <laughs> Damn, anyway, here's my four soul grinder list. Hey, if that's fun for you, then it is. I'm only talking to the people who profess not to care, but they clearly do in their actions. Uh, anyway, there are too many minor named heroes, Lotan, Anvil, Smash, Avok, Mortian, etc. Yeah, there's probably too many foot heroes. We should be generic heroes with named examples in the lore, like Sergerian, Bragged Big Talk, uh, Marakir Bloodski. Little Bloodski. Go up to Minnesota, get some Bloodskis. Let's go. Yeah, sure, there's too many foot heroes. We agree. Cold take. All right, chat. Five hours, 19 minutes. 102 hot takes. Done. Only 140 more hot takes left to go. Maybe over the weekend, maybe Monday. Um, keep an eye on the Discord. I hope you enjoyed the show. Sorry I didn't have any background music, but SG Arcade's gonna put it on Halo Plus as a VOD, and I want him to make $4 from it or whatever the fuck, so. Otherwise, the DMCA robots are gonna come after us. Hey, what'd you miss? Good meme. TY for watching. I'm going to raid somebody, so stick around for exactly two minutes. We'll raid somebody as a meme. Be nice. I don't know who it's... I'm gonna click on somebody. We'll see. Um, and then you can fuck off if you would like. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the subs and the bits and the primes. A shitload of subs this time. And a shitload of donations. Damn. It seems like people like content. What if I did more content? Imagine.